You're listening to Audiology. Support our work on Patreon and be sure to submit your requests for topics in the comments below. Part 1 Introduction The EMS Dispatch, also known as the EMS Telegram, was a crucial communication that came to light on July 13, 1870, and played a pivotal role in prompting the Second French Empire to declare war on Prussia just six days later, sparking the outbreak of the Franco-Prussian War. This particular telegram was crafted by Heinrich Abeken, who was at the Ems resort with the Prussian King Wilhelm I. The message was meant for Otto von Bismarck, the Chancellor of the North German Confederation, who was in Berlin at the time. It detailed the conditions that the French ambassador had set forth regarding who should ascend to the Spanish throne. Bismarck then strategically shared a version of this telegram with the public, manipulating its contents to indignation in both France and Germany. The town of Bad Ems, associated with this telegram, was located on the banks of the Lahn River, east of Koblenz in what was then the Hesse-Nassau region, a territory that had been recently acquired by Prussia. Part 2 Background the conflict between June 16 and August 23, 1866, known as the Austro-Prussian War, saw various German states aligned with either Austria or Prussia, along with the up-and-coming nation of Italy. Prussia's influence surged following their decisive victory over Austria at the Battle of Königgrätz on July 3 of that year. The initial treaty at Nicholsburg on July 26 paved the way for the Peace of Prague on August 23. Under the strategic guidance of Otto von Bismarck, Austria was ousted from the German Confederation. Prussia became the leading force in the new North German Confederation, which it controlled, and it also made significant land gains. They annexed territories including Hanover, Schleswig-Holstein, Nassau, Hesse-Kassel, and Frankfurt, increasing Prussia's landscape by nearly 25% and its population by over 4 million to an estimated total of 24 million people. However, this was still less than France's population of 38 million. France, having remained neutral and neither gaining territory nor enhanced status from the war, would eventually harbor a desire for retribution, inspired by their loss at Sadowa. In a separate but related issue in 1870, the German prince Leopold from the Catholic Hohenzollern Sigmaringen family nearly became the king of Spain. Fearing an alliance between Spain and the Protestant-ruled Prussia, Napoleon III of France strongly opposed this and suggested the possibility of war over the matter. Prince Leopold withdrew his candidacy on July 11th, which was seen as a diplomatic setback for Prussia. Yet despite this withdrawal, the French pushed for further concessions, specifically a promise from the Prussian king that no Hohenzollern would ever seek the Spanish throne again. Part 3. Incident on the morning of July 13, 1870, while taking a walk in the spa park of Ems, King Wilhelm I of Prussia was approached by the French envoy, Vincent Benedetti. Benedetti had been serving as the ambassador to Prussia since 1864 and was under orders from the French foreign minister, Agenor, the Duke of Gramont, to insist that the king promised to never allow a Hohenzollern prince to ascend to the Spanish throne again. The encounter was casual, with the king's aides maintaining a respectful distance as the two men conversed on the Kursaal Promenade. King Wilhelm, known for his polite demeanor, declined to make any such long-term commitment. Following their discussion, both men parted with a sense of reserve. Heinrich Abeken of the North German Confederation's Foreign Office penned a summary of this encounter for the Chancellor, Otto von Bismarck, who was in Berlin at the time. The king had found Benedetti's approach rather intrusive and sought to have a version of the encounter released to the public. Bismarck was given free reign on how to communicate this to the press, without being obliged to share Abakin's original memo as it was. Using parts of the memo, Bismarck crafted his own narrative for the media, omitting the king's courteous remarks and emphasizing that France had imposed demands with a war ultimatum, which had been declined by the king presenting a straightforward accounting of the events. The communique Bismarck disseminated that evening painted a misleading picture. It suggested that Benedetti had been more imposing and that the king had been undiplomatically brief with him. 
This portrayal inflamed tensions, leading the French to believe they had been disrespected and the Germans to think that their king had been affronted by Benedetti. Bismarck, who had been pleased with the deterioration of Franco-Prussian relations, welcomed the prospect of conflict, believing it was better to engage sooner than later. He was convinced that his carefully edited press release would provoke France, that it would act as a red rag to a bull. Bismarck intended this skewed depiction of the Ems dispatch to be seen as the spark that ignited the war. Part 4 Text Heinrich Abiken, under King Wilhelm's instruction, sent a message to Bismarck from Ems, detailing an encounter between the king and the French ambassador. In it, King Wilhelm described how the French ambassador, Count Benedetti, had persistently confronted him, demanding a pledge that King Wilhelm would never consent to a Hohenzollern candidacy in the future. The king firmly denied this demand, explaining that such permanent commitments were neither appropriate nor feasible. The king also noted that he was awaiting news himself and pointed out that the French were better informed, suggesting his own government was not involved. After receiving confirmation of related news from the duke, the king decided not to meet with Count Benedetti anymore and instructed an adjutant to inform him that there was nothing more to say. Bismarck's public statement addressed the matter by outlining the interaction, noting the French ambassador's insistence on a commitment from the king to permanently oppose the Hohenzollern candidacy, following which the king chose not to engage further with the ambassador beyond informing him through an adjutant that the matter was closed. The French translation by the Havas agency incorrectly translated the term adjutant, used in the German original understating the rank of the messenger sent by the king. This error suggested that the king had insulted the ambassador by sending a lower-ranked non-commissioned officer instead of a high-ranking aide. This mistranslation was widely published by newspapers, coinciding with Bastille Day, influencing public perception in France to believe that the ambassador had been disrespected by the king before the full circumstances were known. Aftermath France had an overly confident perception of its own strength and unnecessarily escalated the situation to full mobilization. The situation was further exacerbated by the distorted media interpretations of the communication now known as the Ems Dispatch, which fueled war fervor in Paris, aligning with Bismarck's predictions. This dispatch also succeeded in uniting German sentiment putting aside regional differences within Germany for a common cause. Regardless of these events, the French Emperor Napoleon III had already resolved to wage war to consolidate his power and maintain France's supremacy in Europe, a decision that was not contingent on Bismarck's manipulations. Contrary to the later cultivated image of a carefully orchestrated plan by Bismarck, he was in fact maintaining flexibility in his political strategy, leveraging the press to provoke public emotion only when the moment was opportune. Count Benedetti, who was tasked to deliver fruitless demands to Prussia, faded into obscurity as his communications to Paris became inconsequential. His role was overshadowed once French legislative support for war funding was secured by a wide margin. Consequently, France declared war on Prussia on July 19, 1870, setting off the Franco-Prussian War. Following France's defeat in 1871, the Duc de Gramont, the French foreign minister, tried to deflect blame for the diplomatic failure onto Benedetti. In response, Benedetti presented his account of the events in his memoir, Ma Mission and Prusse, published in 1871.